Hello to the world and to the kingdom citizens. I greet you in the precious holy name of Yeshua Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, who said in his word, John 8 and 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Hi, I'm Dr. John Curry, Ambassador of Pan-African, and welcome to the Embassy of the Kingdom of Heaven on Earth. If you want to follow this podcast, please subscribe to JC Global Embassy TV One. Ring the bell and hit the thumbs up button. We would love to have you to be a part of our subscribers team, and we welcome you. And whatever you need to hear or whatever you need to know, if you scroll through our particular podcast, you should be able to get all of your social as well as your spiritual needs met. Today's message is entitled, but before I give you the title, we just got through doing the power, the black Messiah and the power of his resurrection. This podcast is going to be who is the Holy Spirit. And what is his power? Who is the Holy Spirit? And what is his power working in you? I want you to understand this. It has been said many times when people are in church and they're jumping, they're shouting, they're speaking in tongues and they're doing all these kinds of dances. And at some time, people get the tendency is think that the Holy Spirit is no more than a shout, no more than speaking in tongues, no more than running around the church, no more than getting up doing happy dances. But he is much more than that. So we're going to go in and share with you about who is the Holy Spirit and what is his power working in you? I hope you enjoy this particular podcast because you should never talk about the resurrection if you're not going to talk about the Holy Spirit. So here we go. You see, Jesus said in John chapter 14, he said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He also said in verse 26, But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. He tells us more in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. We serve a God that has provided for us a Savior. And now he's given to us a paraclete, which is the Holy Ghost. And some may call him the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit are interchangeable and they are one. So for you to understand who is the Holy Spirit and what is his power working in you. The most important person on earth today is the Holy Spirit. The most important work on the earth today is done by the Holy Spirit. The most important person in the world is the Holy Spirit. You see the Old Testament, it is the work of the Father. In the New Testament, it is the work of the Son. In this present day of which we live, it is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the governor of the world. 
He is a part of the triune nature of the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He comes to work on behalf of us, those of us who have accepted Yeshua Messiah as your personal Savior, those of us that know that we are believers and know that we are kingdom citizens. The moment you got saved, you received the Holy Ghost. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you should have received his word. You see, Jesus is the word. The Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost is the power of God. The power will always act on the word of God. No word, no power. No word, no power. If you don't study your Bible and read your word, you will not have power when it comes to doing the kingdom work. You see, it's important for you to know that the last days when Jesus rose from the dead, that was the last days. And from that point when he rose from the dead and when the Holy Spirit was released into the world, that is where the Holy Spirit has been ruling and reigning ever since. From the time Christ ascended into heaven, he poured out upon us the Holy Ghost. And the moment we accept Yeshua Messiah or Jesus the Christ, you have embraced it and you have received the Holy Spirit. The New Testament usher in the power of the Holy Spirit. This fulfilled the prophecy and the promise of Joel 2. In the Old Testament, to describe Jesus, it was called the day of the Lord. Let me say it again. In the Old Testament, to describe Jesus, it was called the day of the Lord. Thus, the day of the Lord went for 33 and one half years long. Jesus only preached for three and one half years. His lifespan was 33 and one half years long. Thus, the day of Jesus. It's important for you to know in Hebrews chapter 8, verses 7 through 13, is broken down as this. No more Old Testament. If you sin and fall, and you will fall, you must say there is no guilt here. No condemnation here. The Holy Spirit is about your freedom. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, he gave us his grace and his mercy. But more than that, he gave us the power of the Holy Ghost to lead to God, to direct us, that we may know which way we should go. The Holy Spirit is your personal life coach. If you let him lead you and guide you into all the truth. In verse 11, it says, the Holy Spirit will show you how to live if you let him. The Holy Spirit will never go against your will. Every believer knows when he or she is doing wrong. No one have to come and tell you that's wrong. You're wired to know. Well, how do I know? What well, is found in Jeremiah chapter 1, reading verses 31 down through 40. That's how you know, because God has wired you to know right from wrong. He sealed it in your heart. He burnt it in your mind, your will, and in your emotions. But the Holy Spirit comes to convict us. When we do wrong, we start to feel guilty. The Holy Spirit will also teach us. Through the Holy Ghost, we can learn from the least to the greatest. It is said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20. It is said, What? Know ye not that your body are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? You are not your own. You have been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God. In other words, 
You're not supposed to be parading your body around like somehow you running your body. You see, you have the Holy Spirit in you. The kingdom of God is in you. You also have Yahshua Messiah abiding in you. You in him and he in you. There's no way you can lose unless you make a willful choice to go against the tenets of the word of God. Who is the Holy Spirit and what is his power that is working in you? Many times people will say, I got it. He is, uh, I got it. It's on me. As they run around the church, it's on me. And they began to speak in many types of tongues, not knowing that the Holy Spirit is not a clown. He's not a clown in the church. He comes with great wisdom, great knowledge, and great understanding in order for us to be led by him. We are a paraclete. A paraclete, we get the word parasite from paraclete. The difference is a parasite will come and take hold to your skin. But the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, is within your body. He lives within you because your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So who is the Holy Spirit and what is his power working in you? Number one, the Holy Spirit regenerates the believer. Titus 3 and 5. Nor by works or righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. By the washing of the generation, regeneration, and the renewing by the Holy Ghost. Number two, the Holy Spirit lives in the believer. He's living in you right now. Even as I'm talking to you, he lives in the believer. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. The Holy Spirit lives in you. And since he lives in you, all you have to do is activate your faith for him to come forth. Number three, the Holy Spirit seals a believer. Ephesians 1 and 13. And whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, that the gospel of your salvation in whom also after ye believed. Ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Number four. The Holy Spirit adopts the believer. You have been adopted. The Greek word there is we othesia. You have been adopted by God through Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit adopts the believer. 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of the, of the nevertheless, the foundations stand it sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man, everyone, name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The Holy Spirit knows who God has already selected. Number five, the Holy Spirit fills the believer. Acts 2 and 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Number 6. The Holy Spirit anoints the believer. John, 1 John 1, 1 John 2 and 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teach you of all things and the truth and is no lie. And even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Number seven, 
The Holy Spirit sanctifies the believer. First Peter 1 and 23 saying, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Number eight, the Holy Spirit provide fruit for the believer. Galatians chapter five, verse 23 through 25. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. You have the fruit of the Spirit. The Word of God tells us that we shall know them by their fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is our character. The fruit of the Spirit is our ethics. The fruit of the Spirit is what we live by. Number nine, the Holy Spirit empowers the believer to build the kingdom of God. You have been empowered to build the kingdom of God. There's only one sermon, one message in a continuum that Jesus ever preached. And that one sermon, that one continuum, everything that he talked about was about the kingdom of God. He said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's what God deemed for us to do. We have the Holy Spirit to make the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to talk, and yes, even raise the dead. He gave us the Holy Spirit so we may possess the dunamis, dunamis, dunamo power, the power that comes from God on high to be able to occupy till he come. If you have accepted Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ, you have the Holy Ghost. Now, how does it work? It works by you activating your faith. You must activate your faith and believe that you have him. You must activate your faith and believe that God will work through you. Activate your faith and do what the kingdom of God word says. We're not talking about Christianity. Jesus only talked about Christianity three times. The word Christian was only mentioned three times. He came from resurrection talking about the kingdom and he passed the keys on to us. And our responsibility is to teach and preach the kingdom of God is at hand. I trust God. You understand what God is saying. I trust God that you understand what his word is saying. It's about his kingdom. It's about kingdom citizens. It's about reigning in his kingdom until the Messiah comes. It's about occupying his kingdom. It's about occupying his kingdom until he returns. He is on his way. He is soon to return. And as kingdom citizens, we must know that the moment we got saved, we received the Holy Ghost. And after we received the Holy Ghost, he given unto us power that we may tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And know this, nothing shall by any means hurt you. We're not supposed to be running around just having church. God did not set up denomination. He set up a kingdom. And his king is soon to come. God did not set up what we see today. All of these things going on, all of this racism, that's of the devil. God sets up a kingdom that he through his son will come and rule and reign forever. We're not supposed to be bamboozled by what the world is doing. Get in your Bible. Know the word for yourself. Be responsible and accountable for the king because he's soon to come. And when we do that, we will know who the Holy Spirit re really is. He is, he is the power of God that Jesus left for us to be able to maintain and be able to occupy this world until he come. Well, what does this world, what does occupy mean? The word occupy means do business. What is the business? The business is, is winning souls for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The business is having good character, making sure that 
that we understand Galatians chapter chapter 25, verse 23 through 25. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, faith. That's our character as kingdom citizen. As kingdom citizen, we don't have to worry about doing all of the other stuff. We just have to know that the king, King Jesus, our Messiah, has had, had us, got us on an assignment. And when we fulfill that assignment and we die, and we're faithful to that assignment and we die, then we know we'll go to be with him again. We're serving a king. His name is Jesus the Messiah. Jesus the Black Messiah. Or Yeshua, Jesus, the black Messiah. We're serving the king. We're doing the work of the kingdom. And we will occupy till he come. I trust God that you can believe it. I trust God that you can receive it. And know this, that the Holy Spirit, he is real. He is not a figment of your imagination. He is not what they've been saying he is. He's not something that will make you jump around and shout and holler. The Holy Spirit is real. It's like the wind blowing on branches. When he blow on you, you may react in a particular way, but it doesn't mean that that's his character. He is real. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost is real. And he's ready to go to work in you. Who is the Holy Spirit? And what is his power working in you? He is real. He's the governor of the world. And he will work in you. All you have to do is activate your faith. I trust you can believe it. And I trust you can receive it. And God bless you. Until next time.